हेलो एंड वेलकम टू आर न्यू एपिसोड दिस पॉडकास्ट इज स्पॉन्सर्ड बाय रेनबो हॉस्पिटल इफ यू हैव एवर वंडर्ड हाउ आई वी एक्चुअली वर्क देन दिस एपिसोड इज फॉर यू वी आर टेकिंग यू थ्रू दी एंटायर प्रोसेस फ्रॉम स्टार्ट टू फिनिश विथ नो कंफ्यूजन वी स्पीक टू डॉक्टर धन्यता जी एस कंसल्टेंट इन फर्टिलिटी एंड रिप्रोडक्टिव मेडिसिन currently associated with rainbow hospitals hello doctor welcome hi pallavi uh doctor what happens when couple decide to go for an ivf uh what's the very first step that they need to take okay so when a couple come and approaches the first meet is not directly for an ivf okay. they would have mostly been in a journey somewhere in another clinic or maybe visiting for the first time too in such a case what we do is when we meet them for the first time we take a detailed history of both partners so one thing would be starting from when her menarche started how her cycles are how was the regularity of her periods uh, what has been the previous history sexual history be it familial history in having difficulty in having conception any genetic diseases that are coming in line with their family any important history even be it even personal history any allergy history we take a complete uh, history of the woman also then we need to evaluate for the male partner also so in his history comes his place of work where he works what kind of stress he is under coming to even clothing for men it is actually important to wear little lighter clothes because uh, in male it is placed outside because it has to be little lower temperature than outside so we have to evaluate whether he works in a very pla- uh, in a place where the temperature is too high so detailed history of that the sexual performances of each and their experience so after the complete history is done we go to the past fertility treatment history if they have already taken any treatment outside or are they coming here the, for the first time are they still looking at preconceptional care only and not a direct ivf okay so after the complete history is formed we at least know that where we are standing should we directly go towards an ivf treatment or should we give them a simpler treatment so once that is done we go ahead with simpler basic tests for the couple so first one would involve a transvaginal baseline scan for a woman okay. so that will give me an idea as to how much is her ovarian reserve like i'll be able to count the number of antral follicle count which gives me an idea of to how long her fertility is still good and how her uterus looks like everything i'll be able to at least on a baseline workup i'll be able to know how good her fertility is so having done that we prefer doing that on a day 2 or day 3 of her periods okay having done that for both of them and for husband i would like to do a semen analysis which is like 50% mm. of the uh, genetics come from a male and 50% from the female so he is equally responsible for the baby so Absolutely. i would like to test his semen also to check his motility count of the sperm and the morphology of the sperm having done those we again go back to some blood work up also for both of them those being hormonal tests and some general tests hemoglobin and blood indices to ju- just check generally mm-hmm. how they are thyroid hormone prolactin hormone amh hormone so all these hormones and the baseline day 2 and day 3 fsh lh hormones we do a complete work up of the baseline uh, blood Tests. panel mm-hmm. also and then we come to a decision okay this is a case for a direct ivf we can't do anything with smaller treatment or if they fit into the smaller or simpler treatment we go to basically that. a lot of analysis is done before yeah, taking a decision correct right when someone is actually beginning the ivf uh, treatment or the process doctor what important tips or guidance would you like to share with them be it practically or 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 you know mentally or physically i'm sure there must be a lot yes. of preparations that they need yes. to do what is it that? ivf is definitely not the first step anyone would want for conception so it takes a lot of preparation mentally physically every which way emotionally psychologically financially also for them uh so once we have decided the next step ahead for conception is ivf, is IVF yeah. the we start explaining them the whole process of ivf because it's not just a one day procedure i have to grow the eggs for nearly 10 days with hormonal injections and then take it out prepare the embryos in the lab and then transfer it into her so it would take nearly a month or two for the complete process to happen so explaining the whole procedure with scientific guidance that why we are doing each step is very important to get them into like you know confidence that yes what i'm doing at every step i know the doctor knows what she is doing and i am also in it mm. so that counseling is done then uh, emotional counseling because already they are in despair they are hopeless that 
they have reached a place where they have to do IVF for conception. That counselling where both of them are emotionally also ready and as partners they know each other and are supporting each other in the procedure, that is done. So that also falls under psychological counselling. One important thing is financial counselling because it's a financial burden. I would say fertility is not a emergency medicine because anybody can live without fertility. It is a luxury medicine right now because it costs a lot. So the financial counselling is done where at each uh, point what is costing them what is also explained so that we are all very transparent and clear as we go ahead. So that is done. That is how we are preparing them physically, mentally and every which way. One more thing is uh, the changes, the lifestyle modification I would want to both the couple, I mean the partners in it to follow would be one diet changes, right. high protein, a lot of water intake and good sleep pattern, manage your stress, work out some kind of fitness. All this will definitely get even the oocytes and the sperms to good quality. So that also helps the success of the IVF. And one more thing is explaining them very clearly what to expect. Giving them some reality check on what is the success, everything helps. So together I think uh, once the basic workup is done and the counselling is done, we know what is the next step and what to expect. Right. So since we're talking about steps, in simple terms, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure there is a lot of medical oh, science medical. <laughs> involved yeah. in it. But in simple terms, could you explain the IVF process like step right. by step? What happens? Yes. So having reached a point where we have decided to go ahead with IVF, any treatment starts in IVF from the day two or three of her periods. So she would come for a consultation where I'll do a again check baseline scan to make sure that month is good to go ahead and then I start her on injections. These injections are given nearly 8 to 12 days on an average for any woman but we have to titrate for each person, we have to tailor make it. So these injections are given to grow the eggs to maturity. Naturally what happens is a body will pick one egg naturally by hormones to grow it to maturity and that's how we end up in single term that is single pregnancies but in IVF I want the maximum number of eggs under my uh, microscope so I want all the eggs recruited in that month to grow to maturity so I'll be giving her hormonal injections these injections are basically FSH and LH so I would give her for five days call her back again to rescan her make sure that the eggs are growing at par to the dosage okay. given if okay. not I'll titrate the dose okay and then may have to add one more injection to avoid bursting of the egg before I go and take it out so after having reached the 10th day and rescanning her and making sure everything's reach maturity all the eggs have reached maturity we will finally give a trigger injection after which at 34 and a half or 35 hours we plan an OPU we call it as or oocyte pickup so this is a procedure done under short general anesthesia where it takes 15 to 20 minutes of putting her into, into unconsciousness and through a transvaginal scan I fix a needle where I can take the oocytes out into my test tube okay so once this happens I have her oocytes out under my microscope the same day husband would have given a fresh semen sample we have both the gametes ready in the lab we fuse one sperm to one egg which is called an ICSI procedure okay if not we do an IVF procedure where one egg is left around uh, lack of sperms mm -hmm. to naturally select so once this happens from the next day onwards we check in the lab how they are growing so we culture these embryos for three to five days once the fifth day is reached, we call the embryo as blastocyst and we freeze the good blastocyst and in the next month we do an embryo transfer. Okay. So in the next cycle, I would be doing her embryo transfer mm. uh, where she'll again come on day two or three of her cycle. I'll only build the endometrium, that is the inner lining of the uterus, which makes the bed for the baby. So only that I'll be giving her tablets, no more injections, we are done with the injection part. <laughs> okay. So the tablets are given to supplement the inner layer, to grow the inner layer with a nice pattern, good blood flow and then when it's ready, we put the embryo in and after 14 days we check the beta HCG blood test which is a pregnancy test. Okay. So that will give us a result of the whole idea. And while the process is on, I would have collected multiple legs and multiple embryos are frozen. When I transfer, I would be transferring one hmm. or maximum two hmm. based on the Condition. patient profile. Hmm. So in case if the pregnancy clicks positive, she will deliver and for her next pregnancy, the embryos are still frozen. The okay. rest of them, we can do that. 
in case for some reason if the first embryo transfer doesn't click i'll still have a pool of embryos already kept the next month itself we can do the transfer so this is a very baseline yes. okay mm -hmm. out of curiosity mm -hmm. how many days do the, the lifespan of the embryo is so according to indian law we can freeze the embryos up to 10 years oh <laughs> yeah okay so yeah <laughs> after during our conversation mm. you mentioned too many injections <laughs> would you like to tell something for women who opt for it the fear a woman comes with is basically the injections mm. nobody is ready to take everyday injections multiple of them correct. and they're also put in a lot of thoughts from other people who have already had, had experience correct, correct. or they see some youtube reels the negatives are already in the head so they're always thinking that something negative or the injection the side effect are always going to happen it's not so these injections are very safe very uh, cleanly given there's no chance of side effect when we are titrating the dose for each body so it, these are definitely safe to take and there's no long term side effect or even short term side effect per se when it's tailor made for her oh okay yeah that gives some <laughs> satisfaction and you during a conversation you just mentioned about like youtube reels and all those kind of things i'm sure you're bombarded with questions like i saw this in the insta reel or this is what the youtube video or and an influencer is talking about what do you think uh, should women have this idea uh, like an exposure to social media and ivf and particularly mm -hmm. with ivf does it help uh, to be mom or does it create more anxiety in her so i would say i've had mixed reactions okay there are couple who are well informed there are couple who are misinformed uh, with a lot of media out there talking okay. about this a lot of content being put out there well informed couple are definitely good because one while i talk technical terms and you know, clinical terms to them while explaining it gives them that oh i have understood this this oh, is what okay. the doctor is, is saying it? so it connects them to what they're going through and also it puts them in a position where they feel confident to go ahead because they also understand the process and also it becomes a uh, decision taken between me and them together when they are well informed mm -hmm. and they know but having said that again half knowledge is not good and they that comes with a lot of anxiety so that comes with something where they're always comparing we have to give a reality check mm -hmm. to them that your body is this this is what we can expect so some people will say i saw somebody get 20 eggs how do you say i have less or more mm. and all that and some people would choose procedures which are unnecessary just because they saw informed right. were right. informed about it from some real so for me i would tailor make everything in an ivf according to what is required for a couple but unnecessary procedures or just because somebody is expecting i cannot outdo because it's the body and body has to respond we stand somewhere where we convert the misinformed couple to well informed so a good conversation at the outset should be helpful helping. right yeah. right since we are having this conversation doctor i'm sure you consult a lot of uh, them uh, what are the common questions like the top 3 questions they come to you with which you would like to answer okay. here yeah one thing is very commonly i notice is obviously this is a fear everyone has what if my gametes mixed with somebody else's and mm. then put inside me how will i know this is my gene own genetic baby so this is a very common question and i feel mm. it's a very uh, right valid, ask. valid yeah. uh, question too according to indian law we're not supposed to do and we would not want to do anything like that we double check all our vials we double check all the numbers that are registered with us and while freezing defreezing putting it back to her it's multiple times checked both in digitally and in registers so and also i'm legally responsible <laughs> correct, all correct. of us are uh -huh. as an ivf unit we all are responsible so that definitely doesn't happen the mixing of gametes from one person with another person's gametes doesn't happen that is common second is they think that once in ivf it's always twins it's not so Uh, long gone years are those when always the two embryos were But, transferred mm. now we prefer transferring one embryo instead of two so and some people naturally are prone to have twins not always the twins doesn't mean ivf conceptions that is one more thing and one more thing is the fear of injections many people don't want to go ahead with ivf because they fear all throughout pregnancy they have to take injections not just for ivf but once conceived also till delivery they have to take injections but that is not the case 
because we try to keep the injections and the hormonal stuff very limited we want to promote more natural growth once right. the conception happens okay thanks for clarifying uh, <laughs> this doctor um before we wrap up one more question i would like to uh, ask you when it comes to ivf process and everything a lot of it a woman goes through mm. as a doctor what do you think or your suggestion to a man uh, or a husband yeah right who is in this process right. uh, lately couple are very aware awareness mm-hmm. and woke i would say that both of them feel uh, equally, equally responsible. responsible but there are men even now in the society or the families tend to make yes. them so where it's always put on the female so educating from the outset having both partners in the counseling room talking about everything together making them understand both are equally responsible will obviously help and having said that woman has to go through all the injections and every process husband has to be supportive he has to take care of her he has to emotionally be there also uh, you know i don't know how else to put uh, be her support system while this happens be positive for her that we will make it through that is very important i think a lot of men out there are really very good these days oh, that's very I, nice I to hear i always compliment the husbands like you know you have a very supportive husband don't worry we will go through this together so that puts them into a positive place very nice so before we uh, wrap up doctor what's one strong message or reassurance that you would like to give couple who are about to start their yeah. ivf journey so yeah just because we you had to take ivf as your step for conception don't think that your body has failed don't feel you are somewhere uh, not uh, capable of doing it for reasons that might have not happened naturally but now thanks to technology and science we have chances of achieving a conception you're not failing behind you're not lacking in your own body give yourself hope trust love and courage go ahead with the procedure you will be successful in uh, having a good conception good pregnancy and motherhood oh that's such a very very nice <laughs> and a lovely emotional way of putting it across i'm literally having goosebumps <laughs> no oh. that's definitely my duty to convey thank you yeah. i mean this gives a lot of hope for people who are expecting uh, you know to start their family and things like that uh thank you doctor that's a lot of joy and ray of hope that you spread thank you so much thank you for having me here it's always my duty to give the right information to put out the right content outside so that people are uh, well informed like we put it before thank you thank you